session for the 2020 fiscal year budget for the town of Fairfield for the Board of Finance. It is a public executive session, which means there's no public comment. We may, because we have some department heads here, have a question or two, um, but that was unplanned. And if we do, we'll just ask those questions. And if the department head's not here, that's not a problem, because we didn't ask anybody to be here this evening. So welcome everybody. If everybody would please rise for a pledge of allegiance. Deb, I'm going to ask you Aww. to lead us in the pledge of allegiance. Yeah. 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 Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> all right. So tonight, we have several things we're going to do. Uh, we need to set the uh, salary for the next four years for the town clerk. And then what we will do is we will decide on percentages and we will um, ask our uh, finance team to calculate the impact on the budget. And then we will make sure that increase is reflected in the budget. And remember, that's a four-year term, as I recall. We have to set this year, because the election is this year in the fall, we set the salary increases for the next four years at this meeting. That's the way we've always done it. Um, then what we'll do is we'll go into the town side budget. And the first thing I'm going to do in deference to everybody who's here and, and um, taking the public into consideration is we'll do the Board of Education budget first. And then after that, we'll go back and we'll go through revenue and we'll go through all the other town departments. Does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns with that order of events or they anything? They have to stay for the whole vote, even though they get voted on. Yeah, we lock the doors. You're not allowed to leave. The Shellfish Commission is a gripping conversation. Should sit here like us for six nights. All right. So we are at order with the Pledge of Allegiance is done. The first item is the town clerk's salary. So does anybody have any commentary on the town clerk? First of all, we want to recognize our current town clerk um, who's up for re-election, uh, Betsy Brown. She was just recognized with a big honor and then it was uh, Betsy Brown Day in the town of Fairfield. So congratulations to Betsy and thank you for all the hard work. Um, we are not, let, let's be clear, this is not setting Betsy's salary. This is an elected position, and this will not, uh, if Betsy is reelected, of course it would be her salary, but this is about the position and not the person. Let's just be clear on that. Okay. Um, all right, so we, go ahead. Chill, oh, okay. Um, we did a little bit of research on town clerk salaries throughout town. Mr. Walsh has some of it, I believe, with him. Um, to come up to an informed opinion, we also want to take into consideration what the department heads in the town of Fairfield have been getting um, for raises on an annual basis as set by, I guess it's the Board of Selectmen that votes on them. Um, so Mr. Walsh, do you have the information regarding the town clerks? Yeah, I looked at nine um, towns within Fairfield County for our town clerk's salaries. And I would say the high was Stamford at $120,000. Um, and the low was, I believe, Darianne. Um, but the, when looking at them, our town clerk is number five out of the nine towns. And didn't have a raise for two years out of the four. And while she was at, I believe, the top of that went at the last time we voted on this, She's number now two, kind of, I think, yeah. Uh, I think it was number two in the state, actually. <laughs> yeah. Not even in Fairfield County. 99,000. 99, there are, you know, a number of towns higher who have a lot less taxpayers. I mean, the town that said 120 is Stanford, clearly a, a, a city that has a lot more transactions, uh, more people than the town of Fairfield. So I would say a more intensive job. <laughs> But on the other hand, um, there's towns that have far fewer <laughs> transactions who are smaller communities. Uh, we're one of the largest towns in Fairfield County. Um, you know, towns that are higher than us are Greenwich or Darien, things like that. So 
99,000 is kind of middle of the pack and probably less than the average of all the towns that I looked at out of the nine towns. So, and then when I looked at the salary increases that town hall department heads have received and that we received as number eight as our, uh, um, the one of the latest distributions of information that Mr. Mayor sent us, most, the majority of people got two and a half percent. There are several at three percent. So taking that in all into consideration, it appeared <coughs> justified. Um, and all those other town clerks are getting increases every year, <laughs> just, just so everyone knows. So um, it just seemed apparent that we need to do something at least at this point in time, especially with having a two-year hiatus from giving any type of increase. So. You think it's every two years? Four years. Every, every four, four. Every so four this years. This will be the salary set for the next four years. Yes. Yeah. Percentage and, increase. And what was the last um, <coughs> salary increase four years ago? It was zero, zero, I believe, two and two. Yep. Correct? It, so I don't remember whether it was zero, zero, two and two. It was, was at Linda confirmed yeah. that. It's zero, zero. Well, it might, uh, let me I think it was two, two, zero, zero, but I think that's what it, I remember. It, it was 4% over two years. Yeah, so four years. So 4% increase. 4% in a total of four years. Yeah. So four 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 years. Like well. Yeah. Well, I guess because <laughs> they got 2% in a given year, it was a total of 4% in four years. Yes. It was a very different economic time. Yes. At that point, too. Yes. And I think when we looked at our salary compared to the other communities at that time, um, she was on the higher end of the scale, which has changed. Just a question. Uh, does our town clerk do anything that's unique? Uh, other that other towns don't that we know of any I don't have any knowledge I think the I think the uh, the job <coughs> entails pretty much what statute requires I mean, uh, so it's pretty much equivalent. yes I mean there might be little things such as you know I think there's different ways to do dog licenses whether you do them in person you do them online but you s they still have to confirm all that information and things like that I guess the other question I would have is staff you know, mm -hmm. the comparing our town staff to the other towns, larger, bigger, et cetera. Do we know anything about that? I didn't actually do the comparison <laughs> on, town, on, on numbers of staff. I presume Stanford would have a much larger staff. Uh, if you go in their office alone, when you walk through the doors, you, it's, it's kind of a much greater area, a lot more desks, a lot more people. Um, so I did not do an analysis town by town of what that was. Benefits are fairly equal across the board? Well, I guess benefits are whatever the town is giving its benefits. So I, I did not compare, you know, we're giving whatever benefits we are. I guess if we're going <coughs> to, if we were going to look at that, we'd have to say, are we going to change the benefits for our entire town? For um, the department heads? Yes. So I, I didn't really think that that was a good measure only because that I'm judging the, <laughs> judging whether we're really giving all our employees either too little or too much. So I was just looking kind of at, Trying to baseline the town clerk is what I was trying to do. What Taking is the what is the lowest uh, salary it was in like Darien? Eighty eighty thousand dollars. In Darien? Yes, I think it was Darien. Yeah. Hey Bob, can, for for our and I know this is a real general question. Our our employees who are members of union has have and I know we settle most of our contracts. The increases have been of whether they average about two two and a half percent or am I too low on? Um, they've been mostly two percent with okay. uh, uh, with, a vision, with a zero in here and there. Here and there. Okay. They were mostly two percent for department heads. Yeah, I think the uh, department heads for unions. Oh, for, for unions. unions. For unions. unions. Oh, yeah. Unions. Yeah. yeah. Unions yeah. are two. Mm -hmm. It's been a while there since there's been a zero. I think there, that there was some zeros a couple years that ago. That had zeros. There were department heads that had two. There was department heads that had two and a half. There were one or two department heads, whatever it was, that had three. Mm -hmm. And there was one year and department heads got zero. Oh, correct. Yeah. Thank you. I'm looking at. And the winner is? No. I'm looking at the, the department heads that were in the department head compensation <coughs> document that was passed out for 2000. What the proposed is for, t for fiscal year 20. I'm actually not, other than, I'm not seeing any zeros. You saw zeros? Sorry, what? For 
the department head on the schedule that was sent out to yeah, us that was, for so you got like three years or something i don't remember what you have there was uh if I look at the last year for the fiscal year proposed that we have in our budget, correct? That's right. I didn't. I didn't say that anybody got zero now this okay. year. Okay. So I said there was a year when they all got zero. When they all got zeros. Yeah. The lowest percentage is there's one person that got one. What's the average? Nine people got. Nine people got, two point five. And one, two, three got three three percent. Oh, four, four, four people got 3%. Right. Uh, based on a recommendation? Mr. Wall, yeah. my recommendation, I th think, would be to do 2.5% for the first two years and 2% not knowing what's going to happen down the line the next two years. So it would be 2.5% for the first two years, and for years three and four it would be 2%. And I think that would be a fair increase over four years. Do you have any questions, comments, Mr. Brown, on that? Do you have any questions? Okay, Mr. Mr. Walsh or Mr. DeWitt, go ahead. Uh, just a comment. Um, just so we're clear, the, um, the, the numbers that Mr. Walsh quoted today, how um, that where our town clerk is in fifth place, that is, that is prior to any adjustments that might be made by any of those other municipalities. So that's true salaries as of right, today. So that's as of today, yes. right? So even if um, a bump let's just start with the third place <coughs> if they have a requisite bump too it, it could you know so i just want to be sure i was saying that my analysis on the two and a half percent is if our town clerk gets two and a half percent this year and every town clerk in fairfield county gets a zero this year she'll still be in fifth, fifth that, place yeah, right. out of nine yeah mr walsh since there's no other comments would you like to turn that into a motion yeah i'd like to make a motion that the <coughs> salary for the town clerk be set so that in years then in years 20 and tw fiscal years 20 and 21 the increase be uh two and a half percent per year and in years fiscal years 22 and 23 the increase be two percent per year do we have a second to that motion mr brown seconds it questions comments from board members seeing none i'm going to call this for a vote all in favor opposed abstentions that item is done can you guys please calculate that so that we put that into the budget when we get to that point? <coughs> All right, in deference to the crowd here, as I mentioned before, we're going to turn to the Board of Ed uh, budget first, and then we'll come back and we'll do the page flip. Um, the Board of Education budget is on page 262 in the overall town book, and of course, they had their own budget book. The amount that is before us for approval is the amount that was recommended by the first selectman with a cut of 700,000. It was approved by the Board of Selectmen. Uh, so the amount stands at 181 million six hundred seventy two thousand nine hundred and fifty seven dollars. That is the number that is before us for discussion and vote. Anybody? This is Marmin. So I have a question uh, for our superintendent. Thank you for coming this evening. So we've been talking a lot about deferred maintenance um, and our concern that we not defer the maintenance, that things get done in the short term so that in the long term we don't have things blow up uh, cost-wise uh, and otherwise. And we've been hearing a lot recently about some leaks in some of the schools. Um, and the concern, of course, is that they don't um, get out of control, that we don't have mold, that it doesn't lead to, you know, uh, a huge cost. Can you tell us about, um, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Because I'm focused on the cost. And do you have in your budget what you may need to address issues such as these. And I might ask Mr. Collin to join me in case I get something incorrect. Um, I think ongoing maintenance is always, it's going to be a challenge. And I think, you know, at the last meeting, um, Chair Vitale actually said, we're not going to be able to put enough money in the budget to actually take care of everything that we would need to as a school district. I mean, as of today, we were dealing with an issue at Fairfield Ludlow High School, uh, which is uh, an issue that with the restrooms, um, where we have pipes that are disintegrating. yeah disintegrating. 
Um, and this was a project that was originally put forward in 2012 with the Ludlow uh, renovation. And we, it was pulled out of that project. And I think that's what you're seeing is some of these issues where we just have really old you know, pipes in some of our buildings that, that are aging. And it's becoming more and more of a challenge. So from a cost standpoint, again, I'm looking at next year. I'm looking at what you have in your budget. I, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but my concern is, are we going to be able to address some of these more pressing issues from a maintenance standpoint with the budget you currently have? I might let Mr. Collin just tell you exactly what's in what's in the budget for next year, project-wise. Is that helpful? It's already been in. We already had that discussion. Yeah. I'm talking about emerging these emerging issues. That's what I'm concerned uh, about. Okay, so address those. You don't need. You know, to. they're emergencies because we don't expect them. So the Ludlow bathrooms, um, when they were cut from the project, got put into the long-range plan. Um, we've been monitoring those as close as we can, but when the pipes start to rot or break that are inside chase walls, um, we don't know that until it happens. We have to open them up and repair them. Um, so we put into the budget what we think is needed and what priorities there. Uh, our roofs are in good shape. We have a leaking roof at Osborne Hill right now, but it's under warranty. So the manufacturer has to cover all the costs and repairs and we're meeting with him tomorrow actually to go over some of that work. So that's got a warranty that got extended. We did a roof extension on five schools. That was one of them. He owns it. It's Garland Manufacturing. It's good till 2023. So we're holding his feet to the fire on that. Um, bathrooms have been an issue. We were addressing them in uh, 2010 timeline and um, People tend to look at the bathrooms and see the fixtures and the ceramic tile and say they look fine. But the issue is behind the walls and under the floors where the piping is that's 60, 70 years old. Uh, so yes, we put ahead, put forward in the budget the priority number ones that were most critical. We reviewed those and cut some of those out to be fiscally responsible, but nothing that we thought would be a major safety issue to students or staff. And we did increase quite a few of our accounts for preventive maintenance and repair and fixes where we're seeing increases, where we're seeing additional square footage being added uh, that we're going to need to manage and watch. So I feel comfortable that we have good coverage in this proposed budget. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Anybody else? Just want to clarify, Tom, that there's nothing else. Uh, a new occurrence since this book has come out aside from the Osborne Hill roof which is covered under warranty and the Fairfield Ludlow High School bathroom. Uh, we've been issued Burr Elementary School that and that is popped up. When Burr was built um, and designed the building committee and the engineers agreed to use an older Johnson Control building management system. Yeah that's and been a problem all along. Yeah that's given us trouble. That right after it was so built that gave trouble. Um, so we're looking at that now um, as we're getting ready for the cooling season. We've got about five points that have failed throughout the building. Uh, we're looking at about $25,000 right now to do some repairs to get that back up and running. Uh, so but that, that will be a temporary fix. Right. So should that require additional funding? Do you feel comfortable about what you have? Um, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I, I understand. This. I would say, you know, these unanticipated, right now we're up to a half million dollars. So, you know, in a school district, if we have to cover a half million dollars, we're cutting from somewhere else. So, you know, are we going to cover it? Absolutely, because we have to. You have to get it fixed, especially when it's air conditioning, um, something that, you know, major. So it just means you look inside the budget and you're, you know, cutting into materials and supplies and anything else that, paving, anything else that we can um, to make it work. You know, most school districts, and when I say most, it you know, depends regionally where you are, but generally there is some sort of contingency to cover these type of unanticipated. We have no contingency, as large as our budget is, for these unanticipated items. And finding a half million dollars of unanticipated maintenance is not easy. It has to, it has to be cuts in other areas. And you, you, I'm not asking you to name those, but you know what areas you would have to look at. 
it, honestly, it's something that we, I mean, it's almost a, a weekly basis. It's ongoing. I mean, between uh, maintenance, the superintendent, uh, finance office sitting down on a weekly basis because we can have a, an, an expense in special education that was unanticipated. Mm -hmm. Could be a new student. We can have um, something that fails that has a larger expense. It's, it's a weekly ongoing effort. So given these various subjects we're talking about with some uncertainties or, you know, we're, we're in that phase, kick the can down the road, we're seeing some things come up, you're comfortable with your maintenance budget for one thing? I would be more comfortable if we had the additional 700000 in the budget. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anybody else? Seeing none, this item is before us for a vote. I'm going to, yeah, Mrs. Marmon. I'd like to make a motion. Please. I'd like to make a motion to restore $700,000 that was cut at the Board of Selectmen uh, meeting to the Board of Ed budget. Do we have a second to that motion? Ms. Esma. The motion is now before us to add $700,000 to this budget. The budget is one hundred eighty one million six hundred seventy two thousand nine hundred fifty seven adding seven hundred thousand dollars to that which would bring it back to the original number which so I don't have to do math I got it right here thank you mr. Brown would bring that budget to one hundred eighty two million three hundred seventy two thousand nine hundred fifty seven dollars any discussion on that motion mr. Walsh did you, both of you who are putting this motion forward, did you have conversations with the first selectman on why he chose to cut the $700,000? What his reasoning was? I mean, I, I not in particular. Um, I think there, uh, if, is he here tonight? I don't see him. No. no. He doesn't come to this meetings anymore. No, and I'm not sure if at the Board of Selectmen uh, meeting they had discussion on that. Does Anybody recall? Yeah. But I'm not going to speak for the first select. And I'm not not either. So so no one knows. No, it just seems as though I presume he had conversations with Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones, do you have any conversations with Mr. Uh, Tetro in regards to the budget? And specifically in regards to whether the $700,000 cut? Any conversations whatsoever? Um, the conversations that we generally have is before uh, the meeting, we're given generally a heads up that there could be a reduction. There's no discussion because the Board of Selectmen don't, you know, cut the actual line items in the budget. Okay, so you never had any discussions with them? About, no. About items in the budget? No. All right. Um, Ms. Vitale's here. Can we have her come up to the microphone? Mrs. Vitale, thank you for being here this evening. Thank you for having me. Hi. Hello. Um, in regards to the $700,000 cut by the first selectman, did you have any conversations at all, any conversations whatsoever in regards to the $700,000 in, re in regards to why he made the cut, that he was going to make the cut, and how that cut would be applied? I did not have I knew that a cut was coming. Um, did not have any discussions with him about where and we would find that money in the budget. Um, I put forth the budget that I think our school district needs for our children and for our 17 buildings. And it really wasn't my purview to ask him why he was making the decision that he made. He felt that he needed to make the best decision that he did for the town. Um, okay. Of course, as the chair of the Board of Ed, I didn't agree with it. I wanted our budget to be fully funded. Okay, and how did you know that cut was coming? He called you, or did he meet with you? He called me. He called you. And did he say anything other than, um, did he say what, that he was going to get $700,000? He did not give me an exact number. He gave me ranges. He was looking at it. He was trying to do the best that he could for our district, but he was balancing the needs of the town. Um, okay, so the first time you learned about it was in his budget? The first time I learned the exact number, I think, was when the, when the budget came out. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? 
Mr. DeWitt. Well, two, two data points. Um, one, if we don't know why the first selectman cut it, he might have had a perfectly good reason for cutting it, so I don't know why he reinstated it. Two, uh, I don't know if it was our last quarterly meeting or the quarterly meeting before, um, there was a discussion about a deficit in the B B Board of Ed uh, account, and we were told that there was a $937,000 reduction, if I remember the number correctly, in supplies. Books, mostly, maybe I'm off. 900-ish thousand cost avoidance. So when we sit here and have a discussion about the toilets at, in Ludlow and the plumbing at Ludlow and 700,000, um, I feel like there's a little bit of room in there yeah. for us to move around money, so I will not be supporting this motion. Yeah, Mr. Matola. So I, a couple of things. I mean, uh, the this is a, a board of selectmen passed this budget at, at this figure, so let's be clear about that. Yes, the first selectman proposed it, board of selectmen agreed with him and they voted for it. That's one thing. Um, I, I think, based on what I heard at the meetings, that, that there was concern that the Board of Ed's increase of 5% was a big increase and there was a need to try to balance um, that increase with the needs for the taxpayer. And it's a significant, it, and I say this with all due respect to the Board of Education, it's a big increase. Okay. Uh, and if you look at, the, you know, the page that really got me was the, if you look at pages 24 and 25 of the Board of Ed book, there's, there's significant increases from 2017 to 18, the, the, the staff. And, you know, you went from 2017 to 18, staff salaries to 18 and 19 were up $4 million. But um, that wasn't a surprise. Well, it, the net the head count was though so how much was the head count increase it's like a, an, a, 11 more Let me well no here. that's that's based on the budget but the actual right. they actually raised it last year right that's the, the, the and that's that's a fraction of the four million dollars right. there's a right my point is 17 18 the actual staff salaries was 105 million and change and you go to the proposed budget for this year, it's 112 million and change. And that's a significant jump, and I think that was a concern of the Board of Selectmen. Um, and so that, that, to me, there was a, an, an issue with, with, with that. Um, what do you mean there was an issue with that? It's just a significant increase. Right. I mean, it, for, so for this current budget year, and we've learned about this over the last few months, um, you know, the Board of Ed was in the hole about $1.2 million because they had to hire 11 new staff for this year. That was on, I know it was unanticipated, but that's a significant increase. And I think that was a concern from my observations at the Board of Selectmen meetings. That was a concern that they were having, so. I'm going to go to Mr. And then I'm, I'm going to add, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. I think the delayed maintenance issue is what really uh, perked my ears up in terms of are we taking care of the maintenance issues and the concern was that we weren't, per se. And that is part of why I wanted to know what's going on right now because my concern is if you don't have enough money in next year's budget to take care of these very pressing items. We cannot put them off. So that's really what is motivating me. I hear what you're saying, John. I, I also had some concerns about the increase, but I'm concerned about the maintenance moving forward. Um, further, Mr. Matola's comments, I just want to clarify that some of that additional uh, staffing was special ed in order to realize some cost savings on outsourcing and other mechanisms we have to, to assist these students. Ms. Marmion brings up the very concern that I have. The, the maintenance is a huge concern of mine. So I'm, I'm happy to have you really clarify for us where you would stand if you did not have any monies restored. I can't answer where the $700,000 would come from without seeing where we are at that particular moment of time and going and it's a decision 
for the board. Plus, that's a budget vote, right? I mean, a board vote. Yeah. That's a board. That's a board vote. You know, we'll ask the superintendent of schools for a recommendation, and really, um, I imagine that based on the pressing maintenance needs at that time, we'll play into it. I mean, you've been on many of you have been on this board for a long time. You know, historically, we try to keep the board of education has tried to keep cuts away from instruction and just away from students. So, maintenance very often gets deferred. Technology upgrades very often get deferred. Professional development very often gets deferred. Um, I can't make a promise that that's not going to happen again. So if you're going to cut $700,000, I can't say that some maintenance may not get deferred again when making decisions for students. Um, thank you, Ms. Desmond. Just in terms about the additional staffing, I think it's important that a lot of additional staffing was added over the past few years for the CLCS in the um, at Riverfield and the impact program at the high school and we are seeing that you know a, well savings or n or just a better a lack of a, an expense that might have been in place if we had to outplay some of those students uh, but and we I, you know I don't want to reiterate what you've heard at your quarterly meetings there wasn't as much turnover for teachers which, yes, it does present some budget challenges, but that's also a good thing in that we're retaining the teachers that we're investing in. We invest in these teachers for professional development, for mentoring. You know, we save, so we're not spending that money on hiring somebody new or having a long-term sub. That is a plus. I know that you know, it's negative financially, but there are some definite positives there that we're investing in people and they're sticking around and that benefits our children and their outcomes. Thank you. So, Mr. Walsh. Yeah, I mean, the staff salary, I mean, these are, these are contracts, unfortunately, that were signed by them, um, promoted by them, signed off by everyone except this board. We have no control over it, unfortunately. I mean, it's a 2.7% increase on the entire Board of Ed budget. It's a 4.33% in the salary line alone. And next year, correct me if I'm wrong, is going to be higher. Correct? Well, well, yeah, we won't know until we look at turnover, retirements, all of those calculations go into that number. But is the teacher? The contract is slightly higher. Yes, slightly higher. But that right? doesn't mean what's that what's overall number. What's the differential number. there? What was it this year? Yeah. It's, it's, and I was going to ask you a question about that because. Well, just answer the question it's, first. Time. It's, for this year, it's 2.92 percent for next for 2021, it's 3.52 percent. Right. The first so year, though, half a first year is 1.55 right. percent. So no, no, no. We're just talking. Right. We're we're talking. So it's it's the base is higher. Yeah. I mean, to, for me on that issue, you know, and it is, it, I, I'm not sure why it was done that way, but to me, I think it's better. This averages out to about two and a half, two point six percent over the three years. It, to me, it's 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 better to have it two and a half two. For, for the three years instead of the variation because mm -hmm. there's going to be a hit next year. That's, mm -hmm. that's just me speaking. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying. Okay. Well, unless head go to count goes down. Yeah. I mean, that's right. That's right. I mean, uh, maybe well, population will go down percent, right. and head count will go down or, or, or somewhere we're going to have to make ends meet. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's it, next year. Any other questions, comments on this year? Um, just I have no idea what the I, I agree with John that the first selectman may have just taken the position that this what ended up being 4.6 which started off as 4.99 was too high I really don't know because no one seems to know what he was thinking about but he got us to this point it starts with him um, once it gets past you um, I mean I find it interesting that seven hundred thousand dollars came out of your budget but exactly the exact same amount the first selectman put into paving which is seven hundred thousand dollars more than what his <coughs> department had wanted and suggested um, he obviously has his priorities he's not here to discuss it and uh, and I, I'm not going to get any further into uh, it. Mr. Chairman if I may say I don't, I don't want us to make assumptions about uh, motive. However, I will also say we have since the Board of Selectmen cut a third of the paving budget a few years ago, we have endeavored to get back to their original funding 
of three million. So you know we've we've done what we can to accommodate the department and and the overall budget. I don't know that I agree with your comment, and this isn't. Please don't take this. This isn't a political statement. And this is the board of ed budget we're discussing, not the paving. But I don't even know, in all in all sincerity, I don't even know what the paving plan is anymore, on an on an annual basis, because it's been all over the lot, quite frankly. Um, and that's it, it, it's you know one year we're trying to get the 3.2, but it's okay if we do 1.5. The next year it's got to be 2 million. But it, it's better if we go to 2.7 the next year. Asphalt prices change. I mean, it's just I, I don't even know what the hell the plan is anymore. I know what the plan, the vehicle replacement plan is for the police. I have a better sense of what perhaps a vehicle replacement plan is for DPW. I don't know what they're trying to do with paving anymore. This is the Board of Ed budget, but I just wanted to respond because that's what's confusing me, Liz. It's not. I just don't know what their plan okay. is. Okay. I mean, I, I think I have some sense of it, and, and these are all, you know, all these variables are, are completely uh, dynamic. They're not static. So we understand yeah. that. My concern right now for this discussion is is maintenance. Yep. So, so let's go to Mr. Duet. Okay. I, I, I do not understand how you're equating there being a maintenance problem to the $700,000. You've not asked the Board of Ed. Take that seven hundred thousand dollars and place it toward maintenance. The seven hundred thousand—I don't know if you realize—goes into one big number, and they vote it however they're going to vote in the best interest of uh, of the community. So there's no guarantee that seven hundred thousand goes back to maintenance. Correct. I think to, to answer your question, though, and thank you for asking, is it, it's just a number of items came to my attention since we've had a budget hearing with this department. Like what? Tom, call, how many times does Mr. Cullen has to tell us he's he's good with the maintenance budget? He asked him three times. He said three times, I'm good with the maintenance budget. It's like asking paving. Are you good with the budget? I'm good with the budget. Okay, let's pass the budget. Well, I'll, I'll go even more on the maintenance side. Um, <coughs> some of the things we have invested in, and Mr. Collin, I'll say something nice about you because the door's going to hit you in the back side <laughs> in the next two weeks. Um, w one thing Mr. Collin has educated this board on over, over many years, and he's actually he's been very forceful in this is that he's put in place these programs and these insurance and the warranties. Now, he's got an absolutely valid point when it comes to the bathrooms because you don't know what's behind the walls. And the plumbing is, in some instances, 50, 60 years old. But many of those other items, he's put in place these maintenance programs and we've paid these extended warranties and we've done the maintenance on these in order to seal the envelopes. Now, someone could argue based on earlier discussions in some instances, too good a job because now we have problems with the air quality because the buildings are so tight and there's the whole thing about <laughs> heat and all that. I get it. But the reality is those programs have paid dividends as relates to getting things like this fixed without costing us money because of the warranties or without costing us surprise money. We've paid for the warranties in advance to get this fixed. So thank you, Mr. Cullen, for that. On that Mr. Chairman, can I just add that Mr. Cullen is fine with the maintenance budget as presented right now? We haven't cut $700,000 totally from that maintenance. Okay. That's a thank fair, you. That's a that, fair point. That, 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 that's, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say he's fine with it right now, but I think what I'm hearing from the Board of Ed is if I'm not, and I'm not is there. He, they may not get to some of these things yeah. in, in that budget. So, and I'm not putting words in no, his I mouth. I'm that. talking about the actual programs themselves, Mr. Walsh. And, and I'm going to miss And I think we're going to have to pay attention as a board as we go through about whether these maintenance projects are being accomplished or whether they're being cut, because you know the the, the seven hundred thousand is being cut. Because if it is being cut. We've talked about this before. I think it makes sense at a certain point to move the, move the maintenance money onto the town side. And we'll maintain our own buildings. Because in the end of the day, they're town buildings. They're not Board of Ed buildings. The Board of Ed is given the building to run a program in. But all liability for those buildings, just like we saw with McKinley when it had to be torn down, is 100% with the town. We are the owners of the building. And if the buildings are not going to be properly maintained, then we're going to have to take that money, just like we do on the town side, on maintenance. And when we budget it, the work gets done. And I, I see no other way around it. 
Otherwise, we're going to be opening ourselves to liability from delayed maintenance. All right. Anybody else? Ms. Marmon, you have your hands up. You're good. Yeah, I, I think pretty much I wanted to say that the maintenance budget is fine as is, but that was before the $700,000 cut. I want to just reiterate that. And I am still concerned about evolving issues because although uh, Mr. Collins said he's fine and you can cover it, there are things that we're hearing uh, that are very concerning that could blow up. And so that's my concern. My other concern is that if we have to pay for those you know, issues as they blow up, then we will be cutting into programs for the students. So we will go be going into what I think is the most important part of what you do and what we do and what we fund, and that's the, the programs and the instruction. <coughs> that's my concern. You're going to start to cut that to pay for the maintenance. Okay. Anybody else? Mrs. LeClaire. Um. Yeah, so I'm looking at page um, 41 of the budget book. I know you don't have your budget book with you. But um, under the line for maintenance services, there's 669,000 um, increase in the budget over last year, which is a 13.87 increase over the prior year. So even if that 700,000 goes through, we're still budgeting at least what we had last year plus a significant amount. So I'm assuming not the whole 700,000 will come out of that increase um, when the, it gets into the Board of Ed hands. Um, so it looks like we're still increasing the maintenance budget, um, even with the 700,000 cut, that we should be able to do that. Um, page 41. Page 41. Yeah, Thank I'm you. not sure it, because we haven't talked about cutting the 700. We are trying to restore maintenance this year. The last two years we had cut it back. Uh, we, we have about a half million dollars in there. We're still not back to where we were if you go back to like 2016. And I think that was in a Q&A uh, for the Board of Finance as it well. It was. But it was. We gave the Board of Ed everything they asked for last year. We, we approved the budget as, as it came to us and the year before. So. Anybody else? Seeing none, I'm going to call the amended amount for a vote. This is restoring the cut that was made, and this would be approving a budget of $182,372,957. You didn't want me to say that one, Rob. Um, all those in favor of restoring the budget to this level? We have two. And all opposed? We have seven. Okay. The Wait item is now back before us. At Mr. Matola is waving his hand at you. Yes, right Mr. Matola. So, um, what I, I would like to, to make a, an amendment. Well, hang on. The item, the item is back before us at uh, 181672957 That is the approved budget that's back before us. Just let me state that, Mr. Matola. Sure, Mottola. I'm sorry. Yeah, go so, right I don't want to get into another long discussion about what we just discussed. Um, uh, and based on some of the, we haven't discussed some of the adjustments on the total budget um, that are favorable. Um, I, I'm comfortable making a motion to restore $350,000 to the Board of Education budget. Um, and so I'm going to make that motion. Do we have a second to that motion? We'll go with Mrs. Marmion. So that is now before us. The total amount would be, help me with the math here, Linda. You have your calculator out already? Hang on. I, I'll see if I can do it here. Yeah, 350, right, John? Yes. One, use your outside voice. Hold on the microphone. One eight two zero two two nine five seven. Thank you. One hundred eighty-two million twenty-two thousand nine hundred and fifty-seven dollars. That is an adjustment upwards of three hundred fifty thousand. I don't think we need to re rehash this one, do we? No. Well, no. Go ahead. Mr. Wall. What areas are you seeing to be increased with the three hundred fifty thousand? 
just uh, the entire budget? Not yes, we have no control general? over the entire Board of Education budget. My, my concern, and we've already went through this, I, I do have a concern about the maintenance issues, and, I, and we've seen historically that um, uh, the, the things that don't get done are some of the maintenance issues. So it, it's, it's that general concern, Jim, and um, okay. Okay. Th I think it's adding additional money that can help the Board of Education. And I know we can't dictate where they're going to use it, but um, that, that's, that's the reasoning, that's all. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? I just say that my only issue with this is that just as the first selectman's pulling this number out of thin air and everyone else just seems to be pulling this uh, number. Point of order, thin. can we not make Come comments like that that are making assumptions? No that's out of order. No, no one is, it's not out of order actually, because no one's actually giving facts of where any of these cuts should be made, what they're proposed. You're talking about, you're guessing at whether they're going to be applied to maintenance or not. It's 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 not out of order. That's this what, is that's true exactly of any, what, that's any board of that budget. That's exactly right. what's being done. Let's call this for a vote. I, and I'm referring, by the way, to um, pulling numbers out of thin air. We don't know that. We're making. Please don't make an assumption that that's what was done. I just don't know where these numbers are coming from. Um, the first selectman's pulled seven hundred thousand dollars out. No one knows why. The other two members of the board approved it. No, no one's know why. What? The other two members of the Board of Selectmen. No, what I'm talking about is it. that the first selectman sure prepares his that. budget, correct? Right? He this brings us a budget book. It's always hard to get numbers put back in that the first selectman takes out because technically he's the town CEO, correct? That's he correct. Is, but correct? None of us so he's supposed to be him. the town's leader, right? So he's putting together. I don't what like the word supposed either, Mr. Walsh. I, there's lots of words uh, you don't like. I, 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 it's inappropriate. It's inappropriate. I, 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 I can let's use let it whatever go. words All right. I want to use. Let's bring it back. This First Amendment. Item, let's bring it back. The item is before us. Do we have any questions, comments on the item? All right. Seeing none, I'm going to call this for a vote. All in favor of increasing the proposed budget by $350,000 and bringing it to a hundred and eighty two million and twenty two thousand nine fifty seven all in favor we have three opposed six that item fails so the item is back before us at the original amount of one eighty one six seventy two nine fifty seven any other questions comments concerns on this seeing none I'm gonna call this item for a vote as approved at one hundred eighty one million six seventy two nine fifty seven all in favor opposed abstentions that item carries that budget is done thank you thanks everybody who came out all right now I'm going to turn to revenue we're going to go section by section through revenue Thanks. <laughs> All right, let's start on page 15, and we'll just go um, department by department. Does anybody have a problem with that on the revenue? Okay, we're going to go. We have um, tax collector. Are there any adjustments to tax collecting revenue? <coughs> Seeing none, I'm going to go to the assessor's office. Any comments there? Seeing none, I'm going to go to the building department, and we're going to. Uh, do we have any? We do have something there, Mr. Dewitt. Go right ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, when the, the, uh, the director of the building department was here, we talked about the fact that the building permits are down 6.55 percent from last year. Um, he did, in his comments, mention the fact that the building he's going to make his budget this year, and that is a little more pessimistic, I think, than he, um, than he might have thought during the budget process. So I would like to make a motion to uh, increase the, uh, that revenue line uh, by 300000 to 1958153. So it's an increase? $300,000. Of $300,000 to line item 42112, building yes. permits. Do I have a second to that? Is that a second? Second from Mr. Matolin, a question. So, Mr. DeWitt, I'm looking at um, 
the adjustments, maybe I'm looking at the wrong document that was passed out tonight. I, I thought the recommendation from the Board of Finance, not the Board of Finance, from the Finance Department was an adjustment of 276. Is that correct? No, Mr. Matola, that. Am I looking at, I'm just looking at the wrong thing there? No, you're looking that at is the list that came out from the Finance Department. <coughs> correct. So you're, you, you're. The recommendation you're, difference than what was okay. recommended and what's, by the Finance Department. What's your basis for that? recommendation what's the basis for uh, it based on the the fact that uh, again the director was in front of us and he appeared appeared that he could uh, sustain an increase I don't I frankly don't know where 276,000 came from came Maybe from the billing director okay what, then what I guess I'm challenging him another $24,000 what did Bob say he got it from him it he's from saying that director. Tom Conley was okay <coughs> with uh, 276. Okay. Chris is saying that he raised it to 300 because he wants him to be a little more aggressive because there's more in the pipeline. And Chris, what was your total again? Uh, 1958153 is the new total. It's, I mean. it's an increase of $300,000. Increase of 300000 In building permit revenue. That's before us. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, I'll call this item for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? We have two in opposition. And seven approved. We'll go to any other anything else seven in the building zero. department. Anything else in the building department? Not for me, thank you. Conservation. Anything in conservation? Anything in engineering? Anything in finance? I've got my head down, so please, if I don't. <coughs> um, anything in fire? Anything in the health department? Anything in the library? Anything in police? Animal control? Public works? Purchasing? Penfield? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. DeWitt. The, the evening that we had the, the um, Parks and Rec director and his staff here, we talked about a, um, I believe it was a, an adjustment for utility. It changed how the, the concession stand utilities were, were um, being calculated or, or how they were being burdened to the concessionaire anyway. So um, I'm going to make a, rec a motion to increase the revenue line of 31000 by $10,000 to $41,000. So I have a second to that motion. Go with Mr. Walsh. Any discussion on that motion? And that's the recommendation from the Finance Department also, Bob? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, it's the line 42476. 42476, increase of $10,000. Call this for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Abstention? That item carries. Okay. We'll go to uh, Parks and Rec. Waterfront, the two golf courses, <coughs> solid waste, town clerk, and I have a motion on the town clerk that I'd like to make. I actually followed up with uh, Ms. Brown um, questioning conveyance taxes, and if we could raise it by $25,000, she indicated that that's not going to kill anything neither here nor there you know, quote unquote, doesn't move the needle. She was fine with that. So I'd like to make a motion to raise conveyance fees by $25,000. Can I have a second to my motion? We get a second by Mr. Walsh. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, I'm going to call that for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? That item carries. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm not as good at Chris as that. Uh, conveyance. Uh, I'm sorry, you raised it 25. Two, 2070, right? Oh, 25,000. Got it. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm going to open this all up. Does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns on the revenue side of the house? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to go and we'll do a page flip through each department. 
and again, since my head will be down doing the page flip, it would not be rude to interrupt me um, if somebody's got a motion. Okay. Um, I think we'll only vote. We're going to vote on this budget as a whole. I think we'll only vote if we do an amendment and not vote on every department. Okay. We'll just. We. I think that's the way we've been doing it the last number of years. I'm just trying to remember. But we're voting on the budget as a whole. So, first selectman's office. Is there any anything first selectman's office? <coughs> town clerk's office we need to do the adjustment for her salary and Social Security benefits right. so can you give us that yes line 51010 you're going to increase by two thousand four hundred and seventy five dollars to okay that's the two and a half percent on her salary can you give that to us one more time mr. Walsh since you did the motion to do this can you do the honors here yeah. line 51010 is increased by two thousand four hundred seventy five dollars and line five two two oh Social Security is increased by one hundred and eighty nine dollars okay uh, should I make the motion I'll make a motion that lines five one oh one oh be increased by two thousand four hundred seventy five dollars yep and that Line five two two zero zero social security contributions be increased by one hundred eighty nine dollars. I'll second that motion to increase those. That's before us now. Somebody have any questions, comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstention that carries unanimously. Okay. Anything else on town clerk? The next budget's fair TV. I make a motion we zero out Jerry. No, I'm kidding. He's gonna, yeah. He's gonna put away the skinny lens. Okay, let's go page 52. Administrative services. Anything? Registrar of voters. I have a couple items here. I believe we have a couple items. All right. When Mr. Elworthy was here, he indicated that there was an error in the budget, a transposition error, and that. Um, he needed to increase the budget by uh, $1,500 in office supplies. So I'm going to make a motion on line 56110 on office supplies. It currently reads $250. I'm going to make a motion that we increase that by $1,500. Do I have a second to my motion? Mr. Matola, any questions, comments, concerns on this one? Seeing none, all in favor of that item? Opposed, abstention, that item carries. Thanks um, for remembering that one. What? Thanks for remembering that one. We missed it, yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Go ahead. Any other on the registrar of voters? Yes, I have, um, I believe it's um, in the line for printing and binding, but I will ask Linda whether this counts. In regards to the... Um, what ballots. budget line item they buy ballots with? What line item would that be? Is that the 56100? I'm going to just check. <coughs> okay. Just give me one moment. That's what I have. It, I have ballots written next to oh, Okay. Okay. So I would like to increase that line by $2,000 so that they will buy enough ballots for the elections this year and have enough so that each of our registered voters can have a ballot and we don't run out which we've been coming close to running out and I think even the first selectman had to get involved last year and request ballots be ordered because um, they couldn't agree on how many ballots they should have so it's just so that we don't run out put another two thousand dollars and I think the worst thing would be to have be at a poll station and people be xeroxing them at town hall and running them up so do we have a second to that Mr. DeWitt, questions, comments, concerns on this one? So is, this is to add $2,000 to what is the line item again? It's 56100. 56100. 56, $2,000 to increase the ballots. Anybody? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Item carries. 
Zoning Board of Appeals, Town Planning and Zoning. Sorry, my pages are sticking together here. It's killing me. <coughs> Probate Court. Historic District Commission. Conservation. Shellfish Commission. I said it's always a barn burner. Legal services. Miscellaneous contingencies. All right, active employee benefits. I know we had one here. Mr. Brown, do you have this? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Based on um, most recent information as of uh, the February renewal, I'd like to make a motion to reduce line item 52100 by $74,268. Do we have a second to that motion? Mr. DeWitt, anybody? Questions, comments, concerns? Can, can you just give us a brief? Yeah, this was the better experience on our health costs so that w when the actuaries came in, and, or not the actuaries, the health insurance. Uh, guys from Aon came in and said we're doing much better than we thought. Remember that? Yep, got it. Thanks. Is that five two one zero five? It's. Uh, I have it down as. I have it down as fifty two one hundred. Fifty two. Oh, sorry. Thank that, you. The other one's life. Gotcha. Or, yeah. It's the health. So that item is before us. Anybody have any questions? Why don't you round it and make it seventy five so I can add easier? Seeing none. All in favor? Opposed. Abstentions, that item carries. Thank you. Human resources. Um, yep. Anything in human resources? No. Mr. Becker? Line 58920, risk management fund claims. Um, make a motion for an increase of 212,000 uh, based on updated information. Yeah, that was updated information that was provided in executive session, so. Thank you. Do we have a second to that? Yes. Who's seconding that? Mr. Could, Brown. Could, excuse me. Questions, comments, concerns on this? We're, the, we're a little bit behind over here, so if you could like just take okay. a little bit of This uh, is uh, okay, no, we're, we're, two, 212,000 um, under insurance and claims. It's line 58920, risk management fund claims. See, that's what happens when you skip spring training, you know? <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'd like to hit all the snow days. Any other questions, comments, concerns? All right, seeing none. All in favor of this adjustment? <laughs> Anybody opposed? None. That item carries. Yeah. Uh, there was nothing in workers' comp. Anybody have anything on workers' comp? Seeing none, community and economic development. Anybody? Harbor Management Commission. Anybody? Contingency. We have 328865 um, on contingency. Just to a point, if you look at this, we, we rarely use the entire 300000 So quite frankly, if there was an issue at one of the schools related to a maintenance item in the, in the realm of $25,000. I don't think that would be a big problem with a contingency sitting here if we needed to use it. <coughs> yeah. No. Okay. Let's go. Contri no, change. Con no change. Contribution to surplus. I think there is a change here. Mr. Yeah. Walsh is chairman of this fund balance committee. Yeah. After our kind of extensive conversation that we had had, which was, uh, um, Mr. Mayor um, did a good job of walking us through this and walking us through some of the scenarios proposed and that we will have to continue to have more conversations with before the Von Balance Committee in the next in the coming months. Um, I think these his model that he had which I think was on this page four would show that we would be able to um, by adding a 365 
thousand hour makeup piece from the fiscal year 19 be able to reduce that amount by a hundred and thirty thousand dollars so I'm making a motion to propose to do that I will second that motion it is a reduction of $130,000 to um, the contribution to surplus, which is line, line 58970. Yeah. 58970 reduced by $130,000. reduction 000. of expense. There was Mr. Walsh seconded by Flynn. And this, is, this has already been reduced by the Board of Selectmen, right? Correct. This is the reduced amount, reducing that amount. Reducing it further. Right. Any other questions? 410 from the book. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, all in favor of that item? Those opposed? Abstentions? That item carries. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. <coughs> uh, now we're at the not-for-profit agencies. I'm just going to stay on page 97 and read down them. If anybody has any adjustment to the, any one of them, just let me know, okay? I'll read through all of them. Regional Youth and Adult Social Action Partnership, Pequot Library. LifeBridge Community Services, the Discovery Museum, Audubon Society, Greater Bridgeport Transit Authority, Fairfield Museum and History Center, Janus Center for Youth in Crisis, Grasmere by the Sea, Sullivan McKinney Elder Housing, the Kennedy Center, Mill River Wetland Committee, the Pilot House, and the Center for Family Justice. Anybody have anything there? Seeing none, we will move along. And can somebody help me get to the appropriate? 135. Thank you. It's right in the, uh, is it 135? Yeah. Page 135. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I understood I what, what you meant. Yeah, no, it's exactly what I meant. Private school transportation. Right. Anybody have anything on private school transportation this time? Seeing none. That one page. Health and welfare services. Anybody have anything on health and welfare services? Seeing none. We'll go into the finance area. The finance department itself. Seeing none. And again, my apologies. I'm dealing with sticky pages. What's after that? Is it purchasing? Yeah. yeah. Purchasing? Anybody in purchasing? The assessor's office. Anybody's in the assessor's office. Tax collector. Anybody in tax collector? Information technology this year. And Mr. Brown? Yes, on line five two two zero zero and make a motion to adjust the social security contribution by can you do both mr brown uh, the, other one? the other one is the payroll along with it the five one zero one zero yeah i can do both but one one at a time right no, you can do them both at the same time. All right, so I make a motion to increase Social Security line item by $2,896 and regular payroll, which is 51010, by 37847 That's an adjustment for new hires. Do we have a second to that motion? Can you just repeat the last number, 37? 37847 all right, Mrs. LeClaire is going to second that. This was because of the hiring that happened within the IT area, as I recall. You had to hire at higher rates to fill the positions, and this was bringing this into alignment. This actually should have been adjusted by the selectmen, but it wasn't. It, it fell through the cracks, right? Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any questions, comments, concerns on this one? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? That carries. Well, the second Mary. Thank you. Board of Finance. Anybody? Cut our salaries. Unemployment compensation. 
Yep. Mr. Mr. Chair. Becker. I'd like to make a motion to uh, decrease line 52510 unemployment compensation by $10,000 due to updated experience. Do I have a second to that? Mr. DeWitt. This is the information provided to us by the finance department, correct? It's a decrease, right? It's a decrease. Yeah. Yes. Anybody have any questions, comments, concerns on this item? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? That item carries. Thank you. Public safety now. We're in the fire department. Anybody have anything in the fire department? We're in the police department. Anybody have anything in the police department? Did we do solid waste and recycling? Did we Not go yet. by that one? That's I thought that was later. They're after health. Yeah, that's what I thought. Police. Anybody in police? Animal control. Anybody on animal control? Street lights. Hydrant and water. Emergency management. Emergency Communications Center. We're done with public safety. Anybody have anything on public safety? Seeing none, we'll go to Public Works Administration. Anybody have anything on DPW Administration? What page are you on? That's page 201. 201, okay. And now I'm going to Public Works Operations, page 205. Anybody on Public Works Operations? Mr. Walsh? Yeah, this goes back to paving. And the department asked for $2 million. The first selectman increased that to $2.7 million. And I am going to make a reduction of, make a proposed reduction of $700,000. Do um, we have a second to that? Mr. DeWitt will second it. Okay. Yeah. And the reason I'm, I'm making that proposed reduction is I don't think a case was made for why. I mean, I understand that we're supposed to be doing over $3 million worth of paving. But the first selectman meets extensively with all his department heads for months. Am I wrong with that, Bob? I mean, I've been told that each meets with every department, correct? Yes, he does. Okay. So... That budget's gone over. A number of $2 million is generated that the department head puts forward. Just like the 1.5 was done the year before. And then when the first selectman prepares his budget, he puts $700,000 more in. In regards to paving and the needs of the town, the best person to determine who that, what that number is is the Public Works Department. If they're playing games with that, we need to know about it, but that's the department head put together a number of $2 million. And for reasons that I don't think were adequately explained, the first selectman raises that to $2.7 million. This paving number has gone completely awry over the years. There is no consistency in either the argument on what the number should be or what the plan is. The most cons I thought the, the several years ago there was a plan that was put forward to us that seemed to be the best plan which was we needed to do a little over 13 miles of road a year divided by how many types of different types of treatment were done and that we needed a little over $3.2 million. However, depending on the year, we've had this number go all over the lot and I'm not, and until we get some type of better presentation and plan together, I, I think we need to stick with the $2 million that the Public Works Department requested 
and thought was adequate to do our roads for this year. Otherwise, anything above that is just a guess. And I do find it odd <coughs> that it's raised by $700,000, which is the exact same amount cut from the Board of Ed's department. And I'm not, and you know, I, I, just, I, I do not have any kind of confidence in where we are in paving, where we are year to year for paving, other than it being a fill in on where you want your budget to go. Thank you, Ms. Walsh. I'll go to Mr. Matola. So, I mean, I'm not going to support this motion, and I, I certainly understand what we've been doing over the last two years on paving. Yes, we all. We're hoping to put about $3 million a year in it, but because of the fiscal difficulties that the town's been facing, because of the state primarily, there was a decision that this board, we voted for those budgets where there was a reduction in paving. And the first selectman made it clear, at least to me, and I think at these meetings, that the intent moving forward was to, to play catch up. I think we've all understood that we haven't been fully funding paving, but we've been kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place over the last couple of years. So um, I, that's why there's an increase in the paving budget this year. That's how I see it. I want to, uh, hey, John, I don't, um, or Mr. Mentola, sorry for the informality. Um, the first electman has not had that conversation with me. So if, if he did with you, that's, that's fine. He, it hasn't. I think he said it last year during a budget meeting. Do you no, understand? He he's going to have to do catch up. Actually, actually, he, actually, he didn't. You know, and this is the problem that he I said think. it in the state of the town, actually, as well. Yeah, he he didn't say it here, and actually, last year, it was the department that did the talking, which goes to my earlier comments when we talked about Ms. Esmond when when you and I went back and forth, right? I'm not saying I support cutting $700,000 on That's not my point. But it's different if, if the first elected comes in and says, look, it's a tough budget year. We've got to do this. We're going we're gonna to pull some money from certain areas. That happens. I get it. Understand it, right? Versus the department head who sits there and says, no, this is all we need this year. And that's the thing that kind of stuck in my craw from last year. And it's the thing we kinda t I kind of called them out on this year was the fact that they didn't stick to their plan. They said everything was fine, right? Um, and everything wasn't fine. And I didn't interpret his answers last year to, to mean that. That's how I, I interpreted it differently than you did. Right, and that's, and that's fair. I, but we gave him like five to six to seven different times to say, you know, was this right or was this, uh, and he kept on saying, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And that's what I'm, to Mr. Walsh's point, to agree with him on this, I don't know where we're going with paving right now, you know, whether it be the golf, the golf course where we had a 10 year plan, whether it be you got you weren't on this board years ago when we forced the police department and the fire department to put forward a, a vehicle replacement plan. Quite frankly, we asked for the same from DPW. They did it and then nobody funded it anyway. But that's a different story. Um, I'd like to understand what the plan is here, and I don't have a. F I, I, somebody said, "Hey, I think we are going for three million a year." I don't know whether that's the number anymore. I honestly don't know if that number. I don't know whether that's adequate, inadequate. I don't know because they've changed their story so many times when they've come before us. Truthfully, I mean, that's my problem. Yes, about. absolutely. That's not that has nothing to do with the first election. No, no, no. Ago. And I. And I, I understand what you're saying. I, I didn't interpret that presentation to be that way, and we just right. And that's what I'm saying. I didn't hear. Yes, the first selectman might have said something in the State of the Union. Whatever. I don't. You know, that's fine. But here, it was never explained to us. We cut this for budget reasons. It was no. I got what I can live with, and I can get the job done with this. That's what they said. That's what they said last year. And I think Sheila, you had your hand up first, and then Miss Esmond. Do you have more? Go ahead. No, I. I, I like John, I, Mr. Matola. I I believe it's always been pretty clear that unfortunately the paving budget has been a budget we can go to and cut when we need to, and we have, and this board has supported those cuts. I believe that the that Scott Bartlett and and his team, you know, they were facing a tough budget year last year. They were asked to keep that budget down. And, and they felt responsible, a responsibility to do that. 
and that's why I believe that paving number was, was lower. However, it's always been my understanding, and again, this is my interpretation, that we would make every effort we could to restore that paving budget. Now, I believe there is a plan um, and that we should get back to that plan. Perhaps we should have them come before us and explain the plan again. But um, Revise it. Perhaps, but my concern here is that we are going to um, cut this, you know, what's the expression? Cut, cut, our, cut off our nose to spite our face. I think that we're gonna, we shouldn't do harm to this paving budget. We should give the Department of Public Works the opportunity to get back to where they need to be. Uh, that's my, my perspective. And I, uh, I do believe that adding that $700,000 is part of that restoration of funds. That's my interpretation. Well, thank you. I'm going to ask Mr. DeWitt to comment on that. I think he's got a comment, and then I'll go right to you, Ms. Uh, yeah, I, I do want to comment on, on Mrs. Marmion. Um, be careful with the word we, right? We, the Board of Finance, my recollection, have never reduced this budget <coughs> for any other reason. We've never reduced it, right? Town departments have come to us and said, I need 1.5. Is that enough? Yes. We've supported reductions that the board, the first, first selectman has made, and this year, the, you know, we're talking about the board of selectmen, right? Um, but we, the board of finance, have, in my recollection, have never reduced this budget uh, from what the department had has asked us to do. So the sorry the line, for the line item. Okay, so sorry. for clarification, supported the reduction, the re the recommended reduction. No, the recommended amount. For the amount. Right, the, the recommended program. amount, which was a reduction, not a reduction, but a reduction from the prior years. I'll, I'll restate. We have never, um, we have never voted on a that line item that the department head has not completely 100% agreed with. But but uh, you realized, did you not, though, that what what the department head was recommending was based on our difficult budgetary uh, you really don't you're saying that you th you don't re didn't recognize that we I weren't rec fully funding I, paid I in the last two years and, and again I don't want to be called out here but I recognize that the that his boss told him to reduce the number and, and for why whatever reason but he came before us every time and said I can live with this number so I just want to be clear we the Board of Finance have never reduced that line item never, I, I understand. never, and, never. And, and by the but, way but I think you knew what was going on all due respect. Hey, hey, yeah, go ahead. I know we're what I remember from last year, okay, we talked about it at that budget session for over an hour. S Mr. Bartlett said multiple times, right? Okay. He said multiple times, I can do this. He stood up, like you said, in this budget. He's waving his arms. He's telling us about this new way of paving. I can do this for 1.5. Don't disagree. So maybe getting back to the point where we started, maybe it is a good time because maybe there's new technology. Maybe there has to be a different plan. And I, and, I, and, I, and I understand what you're saying there. But my understanding over the last two or three years in the budget has been, and I don't think I'm wrong about this, is, is that this line item wasn't funded the way the town wanted it to fund it because of the economic difficulties. That was my interpretation, and that's, I don't want to repeat it again. That's it. And we're still on this one point. Go ahead, Ms. Desmond, then I'm going to go to Ms. LeClaire. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I just want to go on the public record to say I do think it's inappropriate to um, uh, assume motive and uh, speak for somebody who's not in the room. Um, then he should be in the room, I guess. Right? So that's not our call, Chris. Um, you know, <coughs> Mr. Walsh, I, I recall during our budget hearing on paving, you mentioned specifically you felt that we had a lot of roads that were in, in bad shape. Were there without respect to utility uh, erosion or damage? Um, can you recall saying that? I remember having a complete conversation about this. If you're asking about my comments during the night, we were talking about paving. And then I do think that the roads are, are, are not in great shape. And I also recall seeing that we are increasing this. The department head wants to increase this budget by 33%. That's exactly what it was cut. 33%. He yes, wants to time. increase it by 33%. The first selectman 
is trying to go for an increase of like 70 percent. Now, my issue is that I have never seen while I've been on this board, I don't ever recall while I've been on the board of selectmen or while I've been on the RTM, we're talking like 19 years, where a department had asked for a certain amount after having extensive conversations, sit down meetings with the first selectman about his budget or her budget. If, I don't know whether Sherry was doing a budget at that point, but I don't, I don't actually, I don't think so. But mm. um, <clears throat> where the department head is asking for a specific amount after speaking with the first selectman, and then the first selectman comes in with his budget with such a drastic increase, let alone any increase, I don't remember. <laughs> because technically, as the CEO, they're jointly coming up with a, a budget for the town. So to see, and then without the first selectman coming to this meeting, to sell that $700,000 increase of why, why when he met with these people in December, November, December, why he wants an additional $700,000 in here. I don't know why. He didn't come, he didn't try to sell it. The department had saying, thank you, I'll take a 33% increase in my budget. <laughs> and, and that's why where I'm at my quantity. 70% increase, what are you saying? Okay, so with, you know, with respect to the discussion about how you know, there have been some pressure pressures on parts of the budget, non-essential parts of the budget, when we have uncertainty, when we are worried about other revenue sources. This board has also expressly uh, you know, made our case that, and again, uh, this is a, a, a we hour, to, to hold the line, you know, to find savings, to find efficiencies. So you know, th th this, I think departments are also responding to, to our concerns and our, our requests for some a little austerity when we can especially in response to things that are out of our control sounds like an assumption i'm going to go to Mrs. no the, the, these are discussions i can recall since i've been on this board yeah okay. go ahead mrs leclerc no. i just want to confirm with mr mayor the current year budget um they're going to be able to pay uh, roughly about 600 more because the utility is paving extra roads and then for the budget that we're looking at there's again more utility paved and planned so that's an additional amount of roads being paved this year than will are actually shown in this budget there, there was six hundred thousand dollars added to not what we added but the utility is doing the other so half there was of six hundred thousand dollars added to roads that that utilities uh, churned up and I, I do not know whether those roads would have been on the paving schedule or not they were put on the paving schedule because they were dug up by the utilities and didn't we add 600 grand this past budget year we got the right, extra to, money right, right? To, to, yeah mr. Walsh made that recommendation right. but that was only for half the road the utility did half the road so that's right, but, I'm, but what I'm saying is I, I cannot I have no idea if any of those roads were on the paving plan, had they not been dug up by the utilities. Yeah. It doesn't so, so to say that they're extra roads per the plan would not be uh, correct. It, it doesn't matter if it was on the plan because those roads are now paved and like new. So they can pave other, like, so it changed their paving schedule, but we still paved roads. Correct. And, and the same will happen for this year's budget, that there's additional roads going to be paved that don't appear in this road, but we're getting a benefit from that. No, this, they have, when they put the budget together, they knew which roads the utilities were going to be addressing. No, but Mary's right. But there's They're another half of the road that doesn't, that we don't pay for. But, and yeah, there's another that, half that, of the road that they don't. What correct. they need to do is, based on what the utility does, and it's not the optimum way to do it, Right. But based on what the utility does, they need to adjust their multi-year plan. And, and Correct. Mrs. LeClaire's point is, when they adjust their multi-year plan, when the utility goes and does something, they pay for half the road, we pay for the other half, 
So you're getting a two for one there, okay? Not in the same timeline, but you should be adjusting and moving roads around based on that plan. Because yeah, no. now you don't have to redo that road for another 15 years, whatever it is. Whatever well, correct. That's your but the road, can, I mean, this is, might be a ridiculous example, but the road, road could have been, been paid year. last year. Right, you're right. <laughs> right. You're absolutely right on that. You're right. You're so right. that's why it's. Okay. Mr. Walsh? After hearing some of the comments, um, I'm going to first explain what I'm going to do before I do it, just so everyone understands. I'm going to propose that 500,000 out of the 700,000 go into contingency until we two a couple of things happen. Number one, we get a better plan presented to us by DPW. No. And I'd like the first selectman there present to ask questions to during that. Uh, because I want to hear the plan. Also, Mr. Bartlett represented that there's more utility work being done, other areas in town. Like there's an area, I've got a call from a client today, up in Rock Major. Big project going up in the Rock Major area of town. Last year, we funded the utility work out of surplus. If there's utility work being done where we can get more bang for our buck, I would propose that we do the same thing that they we use some surplus money for specific projects but those should be noted and a plan come up for what those utility works are and what additional work is going to be completed so we will I would propose that we increase take it takes and and then also the other second part is two hundred thousand dollars I want to cut until next year until we get a better plan so I'm going to propose the following that the this is an amendment to your amendment. Uh, yes. Matter of Go fact, ahead. I'll withdraw my first amendment completely. Okay. And whoever seconded, I guess, has to Mr. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. Okay. And that we reduce the budget from 2.7 to $2 million. That we increase the contingency account by $500,000. But that that $500,000 be really earmarked for paving to the extent that this board gets a presentation on that and we feel sufficient to release the, the, those funds. Well, we have to vote to release those funds anyway. Yes. So, uh, yeah. yes. so first, I guess the first motion, do, can I make them both at the same time? Yes. Okay. Because it's you're adjusting. Essentially, let me round it up. First of all, Mr. DeWitt, do you want to second that? I, I will second it, yes. Okay. So we're talking about the DPW paving line. What Mr. Walsh wants to do is reduce that line by $700,000, with the first bit being a $200,000 reduction of expenditure period, and the second being a $500,000 transfer from that paving line item to our overall contingency. So the total net reduction to the budget is only $200,000 with $500,000 moving to contingency as an earmark pending additional information from DPW relative to a paving plan, utility work, as well, Mr. Walsh, as, as whatever's going on at the state and the like. Yes. <clears throat> and Mr. DeWitt, you second? I, I how do I, three okay. seconds, yes. Okay. That item is now before us. Anybody have questions, comments, concerns on that? Mr. Matola. No, I, uh, I'll, su I'll support that. I think that's, that's okay. I'm, I'm just, because I'm supporting it because I'm concerned, I still think that the $700,000 was intended for catch-up, but I understand what the motion is trying to do, so I'll support it. Thank you, Mr. Matola. There's also no threat of losing our contingency, so. No, right, exactly. Anybody? All right, seeing none, I'm gonna call this one for a vote. Uh, let me use the very specific. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that other comment. What was the contingency comment? That we're not going to lose it. Oh, we won't I lose it. Okay. No, we've already passed it, oh, by the oh, way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where's? Give me the line item for uh, paving, if you wouldn't mind. I can't. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So, we're the motion on the table is to reduce line five seven zero zero two by seven hundred thousand dollars. So the new number would be two million dollars. 
with two hundred thousand dollars going to the general contingency. Five hundred. Our five hundred thousand going to the general contingency and two hundred thousand dollars a cut. You like how I like to slip that one? <laughs> and two hundred thousand dollars a reduction in overall spending. That's the item before us. All in favor? Opposed? Abstention? That carries. One abstention. One abstention. Yes, thank you, Mr. Becker. Who was the abstention? Mr. Becker. Very statesmanlike, Mr. Walsh. All right. Anything else on public works? Sorry. Let's continue. Building department. Can we increase his revenue again? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. Engineering. Health and welfare. Anything on health and welfare? Uh, on health? Yes. Yes, go right ahead. Oh, no, you don't. Yes, you do. You have one. Sorry. The copier. Yes, so online item uh, 53310 when to reduce the budget by $1,651 as the rental copier was eliminated and they replaced it with a multifunctional printer. Three, they eliminated a copy lease. In, in, IT, in IT water, I think. Yeah, do we have a second to that motion? Yeah, we'll go with Mr. Matola on that. Anybody, any questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Human and social services, questions, comments, concerns on this one? All right. Let's go to uh, solid waste and recycling. Always a barn burner. And where is that one? I think the those three were handled by the. They board were all done. Board of selectmen. Yeah, it was already Nothing. There's no additional there. Yeah. Library. Anything at the library? Anybody in the library? Seeing none. Uh, we'll go to Penfield. We did the revenue on Penfield. Yeah. Park and recreation. All right, there's a few things here. Um, does the marina come under park and recreation? Is that in this, is, am I appropriate to do this in this budget? Waterfront. Yeah, waterfront. Let's go to waterfront. Thank you very much. That's right, waterfront. It's called waterfront in the marina. You would think I would know. Anybody on park and rec, anything? Seeing none, I'm going to go to the waterfront. Here's what I want to do. Um, open this for discussion. Uh, first of all, I'll make the motion and then we can have discussion on it. I would like to establish a revolving fund for the marina and I would like to take $25,000. We can call it capital outlay. We can do whatever you want to call it. Um, much like we did for the fire school, like they're doing in the fire school, much like they do over WPCA, right? I want to set aside $25,000 so that revolving fund can be used for general maintenance items it doesn't have to be used but it's set aside and it's part of our annual budget process so we don't have a line item here for this I would like to add a line item for a revolving fund of 20 this year the amount being $25,000 to put in that revolving fund um, do I have a second to that motion then and I'll explain why Mr. Walsh thank you here's why right we had the discussion about them increasing the rates because of market rates. Um, that was a discussion that came about last year at this table. It's come about, it's kicked off, we've asked for a business plan, much like we've got for the golf courses, uh, much like we've done P&Ls for other areas of park and recreation. And after talking with the boaters down there and going on a tour and watching what's happened down there, um, 
there's just general things that we're not keeping up with. And the boaters are not complaining about, I initially thought it was, hey, we just don't want to pay more. They're saying, you know what, we'd pay more, but we're not getting some of the basics. We're not keeping up with the marina. We're not keeping up with our dredging. We're not keeping up with the hooks. There's safety hazards there. Um, Flynn, you talk about charging market rate, but we're not getting market services in certain areas. Um, by putting aside the revolving fund and making sure that we have funds to put in there um, makes sense to me. And I'm going to put somebody on the board on the spot right now because she's a boater. Now, she doesn't have a boat down there. Um, did many years ago, but now it's somewhere else. But Mrs. LeClaire, can you speak a little bit about the marina down there or, or some of the safety things you've seen? Um, well, uh, it's been a while since I've actually had a boat there. But um, I think that they do have a point with the uh, arms for how they attach them to the um, you attach your boat um, and that there are safer versions of them and they're not very expensive and so I think that would be something that you know as they could they should replace them or at least if a boater who purchases the arms moves to a different slip they should be able to get a new pair of arms um, I don't know if I'm calling them the right thing I think they were also called like frog hooks or, or hooks, something yeah. frog hooks. Um, but we always called them arms, so that's why they kind of look like arms. Uh, um, and, you know, there's ones with steps that would be a whole lot safer because it's probably, if you don't have a platform on the back of your boat, it's probably like about a two foot jump to climb on, on board, or you have to bring your boat around to the, the gas dock to load your passengers. Um, so it would just be a, a nice safety feature if they would be able to replace those type of things. Thank you, Mrs. LeClaire. It's If we're going to run it like a business, we've got to treat it like a business. I'll go to Mr. Matola and then Mr. So Walsh. So just uh, I'm not sure I'm going to support this. Not that I don't think it's necessarily a good idea. I, I think I would need more information. I mean, who would have control of the $25,000? Um, when, when the marina... Um, discussion was going on I thought the uh, the uh, DPW had uh, indicated made, indicated that whenever there's an issue we're down there fixing things um, so 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 I guess I think this is something that maybe shouldn't go in this budget but maybe we should have a, a, a fuller discussion about it and maybe think about this for next year's budget that's the concern I have. yeah I respect that the only problem I have is these people have been waiting for a long time um, and the dredging, the fact that that dredging was approved several years ago and isn't, I mean, there's, it's just they hear that all the time. In talking with them, they hear next year all the time, and that's what you. bothers me. And I think the dredging's a permit issue, the way I read some of the emails going back and forth. I don't, I don't, I, that's I, I don't I know it. about that. Mr. Walsh? Yeah, I mean, I think we've raised fees down there last year about fifty thousand dollars and this year we're increasing it so five percent so we'll make an additional twenty five thousand dollars so um i guess my issue is when i ask them are they planning on doing any maintenance they say no we're not unless dpw gets a specific slip that something is cracked or broken there's nothing new that's being done down there and until we have a plan, I mean, I know they're about to come to us. We keep hearing that for a while. They're going to come to us with a plan. And you're not going to use any of it. You're just trying to make pure profit on that. You cut security down there. People are having outboard motors stolen, boaters down there. And I, I don't have a boat, so I don't have, a, you know, a horse in this race, okay? So never had a boat, never been a boater. Um, you don't want me with a boat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I think that putting the $25,000 in there can actually be used towards paying whenever we decide to do it for some fees, um, especially if they start doing some planning down there when, when we get our, our, our plan. But I don't think it's a bad thing to have, to have a, a revolving fund. To be honest with you, maybe we should have them have a revolving fund from now on so that the next time we have to do a major renovation, 
there's money in there to do it. So I'm going to support this. Uh, I, I just think that if you're going to tell these boaters you're not going to make any improvements with the increased fees you keep charging them, not even putting some more lights in, more water facilities I in, um, I, I think the money would be best served. We're still going to have it someplace to use. Put it there. Thank you. Mrs. Marmion. Thanks. I think the intent is good, but I feel like we'd be throwing money at we've identified multiple problems or issues and we we're not kind of giving anybody control of how to make decisions about how to spend the money where so I would agree with Mr. Matola let's 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 agree that this might be an idea that might address some of the issues but I think we should have a plan in place and again DPW was came before us and they did say they're the ones who go out and fix the hooks and do some of that maintenance and then you've got the um, the committee that's looking at developing a plan you've got the dredging issue you've got the renovation issue um, you've got the increase in fees there are so many issues and I wouldn't I, I wouldn't know well who's going to make the decision on what to spend this money on so I think it's good in concept. I think it's putting the cart before the horse, and I wouldn't want to just throw money out there without allocating it towards something. Thank you. Uh, I just want to clarify something that Mr. Walsh said. You know, that you said they're not planning any particular maintenance. Now we've got seventeen thousand and two different line items. You know, the the maintenance and repair. Are we saying that they're not planning to spend that money? I didn't say that. No, I'm just that. wondering if if I mean, would is that what that would suggest? Because they have. Seventeen thousand dollars here. You want to give them twenty-five more in? Now I'm not saying I want them to do it. As a matter of fact, I, I would actually, I would actually contest that. To some degree, I think it's wise not to do some of those projects. But you're taking five percent more after just giving them another decent increase the year before, and you're not providing them with anything additional. At least put the twenty-five thousand dollars, which is basically the increase for this year, into a fund, which is kind of some of their money towards throwing up planning fees for next year, towards putting towards the reduction of whatever they decide to do down there and we approve towards that, reducing that amount. That exceeds the 17,000 they have. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They're not keeping up with things down there. I would say that the, re I think you raise a valid point over who's going to control it. Here, here's what I would say. The revolving fund should be controlled by Parks and Rec specific for the marina. And if they have a marina subcommittee that's part of the Park and Rec Commission, the marina subcommittee should make the, rule, make the determination of how the money should be spent. Um, two points on that. They can, as Mr. Walsh said, use that towards planning of a revision to the marina. They can use it towards emergency maintenance items. They can use it towards what, what Mrs. LeClaire alluded to, as I've heard, hooks, arms, whatever they are. What I think, and the reason I'd like to get this done sooner rather than later, is because they've been hearing next year for many, many years. And the only thing that's been certain for these people has been raising their rates. And the only thing that happens annually, or every other year, is raising their rates. All the promises that have been made on the other side haven't been coming to fruition. and my view of fairness is what's really driving me on this issue and there's valid comments on hey wait till next year but next year has never come for these people and they've been paying and they've been paying and they're paying more and to say to him again let's wait till next year I want to give the 25 into a revolving fund to be used appropriately and administered by the Park and Rec and the Marina Subcommittee to support moving forward. This is a huge town asset that is under-managed. And, and this isn't an altruistic motive on my part because I think that if we're going to charge more, and they, should, they have the right to expect more. Mr. DeWitt? You know, and generating revenue, just as Well, that's, the, that's what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> um, I was going to say the exact same thing you did. I, I think the 25000 should be within the, the Parks and Rec Department, but I also wanted to say, um, and I think Mr. Michelangelo would, would agree with this assessment, you know, DPW is kind of the handyman of the marina there, right? They come in and do maintenance. 
but they don't manage this. So I think the intent of this 25000 is, as I understand it, is for future enhancements, not the, you know, not the this part broke, this, that's what these two line items are, that 12000 whatever that number adds up to be. That's th those, those two maintenance line items, I think, are DPW going down there and fixing things that have already broken. The 25000 is more of a long range. Yeah, long plan. I don't know. I don't want to use the word plan, but a long range kind of a fund. I want to go back to something that Mrs. Marmion said, too, that I think is she mentioned, she alluded to the plan that's coming before us. I have one very specific concern with the plan coming before us right now. I hope that's not just a renovation plan. I truly hope it's a business plan. You know, how that marina is going to run for the next 10, 15, 20 years. My concern is, is it just going to be a renovation plan? Yeah. We need $8 million to renovate it versus what's the, what's the business plan there? I, I'm, I, I just I heard a lot about we might need eight million dollars, you know, seven million dollars, you know, five point seven plus one point three in soft costs. That's what I heard. So you know that's going to be understated. So that's going to be between seven and ten million dollars a proposal. But I didn't hear much about what the business plan is going to be behind that. I don't know. Maybe I thought I'm we wrong. had asked Park and Rec to put together we did a a plan and that they were coming forward. I, I mean, right. So I. Again, I don't disagree with the idea. However, from my perspective, I'd rather have an alloca allocation of what these funds would be used for. So I think that I we're kind of reversing the process here. I want a plan with a budget, not necessarily a plan of the plan, but a plan for what we would use these funds for. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, clarification, just so we set it up properly. Revolving fund is a fund where monies go in and out. And I don't think you're thinking about a revolving fund. I think you're thinking about it more like what Chris is saying, like a sinking fund for future capital that's improvements. Fair. Thank you. Yeah. That's a better that's a better terminology. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. You're right. I use right. the wrong terminology. Yeah. Right. And, and so Thank for you. example, if they had an emergency, even without this fund, we'd take care of it other ways. Right. If, if we, Thank you. Yeah. So it's just is it is it for future capital improvements or something else because if it's for capital improvements that's that could be a different it's for vote differently on yeah it. it's it's for both John it is to allow them funding to get over emergency situations and deal with more of the moderate to longer term situations whether that be capital whether it be planning whether it be um, consultants, right? It's to start establishing this as a business entity and not just catches as catch can. And it's to show a little faith to the boating community that they are. We are actually looking out a bit longer, and they've keep been told so often, "Wait for tomorrow, wait for tomorrow." And I'm just a little tired of that with us raising the rates. That's all. <clears throat> Anybody else? Ms. Sesman. Thank you. Um, I don't know that I can interpret it this way, but, you know, if you look at their FY17 actual and then their FY18 actual, that's, you know, quite a big difference. And then I don't have my notes handy, but the increase then for FY19 budget. Um, Revenue is $25,000 based on rate. Yeah. That's where I got the twenty-five. Okay, so it's just taking and saying this year's increase, right? Right. We're going to set aside, and it's going to be spent on the marina in some way, shape. Our or form expectation is they will s they will spend the seventeen thousand. Correct. Correct. It's a good faith effort on our part to say we're actually going to invest in the asset that you guys are paying for, and that we keep on raising your rates on, right? Because what they're saying is we're obscene in their view, we're obscenely profitable on that and you're not investing in it. That's what they're seeing. I don't recall um, Mr. Michelangelo telling us how much those those hooks were each. 250, 250. bucks. Yeah. Anybody else? All right, I'm gonna call this for a vote. Oh, Mr. Walsh, did you have something you wanna say? I, I just wanted to point out that it's also maintenance repair that 17,000, not just for what you traditionally think is the marina, but it's also where the sailboat, the sunfish are, right. all that stuff. All the stuff where the 
boards are down by Penfield. It's it's things like that that continually need repair every year. So it's. Did you know? And Mr. Walsh brings something up, uh, brought something up before that I never knew. Did you know we cut back on security down there? Maybe we don't want to broadcast that out loud, but we did. We cut back on the security was cut back. I don't know when and where that decision was made, but those boats are sitting out there at certain times, and I'm not going to broadcast what times without the security. It's kind of scary. Well, the problem with that is. You know, the amount of people are spending on um, electronics on boats now, good for good reasons, GPS devices, things like that, that are easily removable and can be sold on the black market. It's just, I, I think they should look at that or we should get a presentation on All right. Anybody else? Seeing none, I'm going to call this item for a vote. So the item is to an establish a sinking fund to be used for marina items, uh, marina-related projects and investments under the control of parks and recs within the waterfront and marina budget this year to be uh, established with a $25,000 contribution. All in favor? Opposed? Abstention. So Mr. Matola abstained and Mrs. Marmy and Mrs. Esma opposed. All right. Six two one. Let's go. Golf courses. Do we have anything at the golf courses? Dickman Golf Course and then we'll go to Smith Richardson. Yeah. Mr. Walsh. Uh, when we had our presentation regarding H. Smith Richardson Golf Course um, specifically when we started querying in regards to the capital account of $42,000, um, uh, Peter discussed um, the first item under capital, which is on page 257, which was a sprayer, which was really a lease. It was going to be the first annual yep. payment of a lease uh, for a $52,000 sprayer. <coughs> but when queried about it, he stated that he had just had the sprayer that they had, had significant run of, just had significant renovation. And in order to get, since we spent good money on that renovation of that sprayer, he seemed to think that he would be fine to pull that off the list for this year. Not that I'm saying that we don't need a sprayer or that leasing's not a good idea, but I think we should get the value out of that repair we had just made. And you know, when he feels that it's gonna die again, I think he should bring that back again. So I would suggest, and I'm going to make a motion that we reduce that line um, for their capital expenditures under um, H. Smith Richardson Golf Course Line 57000, reducing it by $13,000. Do we have a second to that? We'll go with Mr. Becker on the second. $13,000. Anybody have any questions, comments, concerns on that? Seeing none, all in favor of that reduction. Opposed, abstentions, that item carries. All right. We did Board of Education. We're going into retiree benefits. Uh, can we start with um, OPEB? We have some potential adjustments to OPEB. Mrs. LeClaire? Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion to adjust um, OPEB for the town, I think it's line 52105 uh, by uh, 450,000 no, uh, $460, $460, uh, and $40, uh, and that's because of the updated OPEB uh, information um, from March. Reducing that line by that amount? Yes. Mary, do you want to do the other one as well since okay. we're here? And then the next one is um, the OPEB for police and fire. It's line um, 52310. 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, 52, and the actuarial report that we walked through several weeks back or a couple weeks back. Anybody? 
Seeing none, I'm going to put this item before us to reduce both OPEB accounts. The town won by $460,040, and the police and fire won by $95,000. Those are line items 52105, 52110. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? That carries. All right. Then under retiree benefits, I have a motion to make here. You'll recall we had a lot of discussion about the do no harm um, and making sure that in aggregate for uh, police and fire and uh, town side for the regular pension plans that we didn't want to um, put below what we had put in in prior years. That's our do no harm provision. With all the savings we've had in other areas, in order to do no harm here, I'd like to add uh, $81,730 um, increase to the town side uh, contribution um, to the pension program. Do I have a second to that motion? That would be Mr. DeWitt, and it's 52310. Do we have discussion on this? This is our do no harm. This is. Uh, making sure that in aggregate for both those items we don't go below what we funded it last year. Anybody? Seeing none, all in favor of this adjustment? Opposed? Abstention? That carries. Does anybody else have anything else on retirement or retiree benefits? Seeing none, let's go to debt service. Does anybody have anything on debt service? Seeing none, we're at the fire school. Can I just ask one quick question, yes. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Mayor, with, with us using the use of debt service fund reserves of the $1.4 million, does that reduce that amount of debt service fund reserves to zero? Except for uh, the bond premium, yes. Except for bond premium. So we still have bond, more bond premium to spread yeah, out I over time. I, I, I arbitrage that over three years. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Regional fire school, anything? Seeing none, water. Oh, yes. Go ahead, Mr. Day. Just a, a, a budget committee item on it for Linda. Linda. Um, on, the, on the budget school, we talked about this, but I just want to make sure it's on the record. Next year, we'd like to see the reserve account in the, in the budget book for the, for the, for the fire school. Um, and I'd venture to say we'd want to see the, the sinking fund for the um, marina. As well as the fund um, that was in WPCA that we're not at yet. Yeah, in the WPCA. Hey, Mr. Please. On, on, on that, do you think, like, uh, at some point during the year that we can get some type of a, an update on have they used any of those monies in those sinking funds? I think that's an excellent idea. Yeah. Just yeah. so we see how it's going. Well, quarterly, Absolutely. Quarterly. Thank uh, you. Yeah, but I'm just saying as a as a budget committee, if we could add that to the budget book. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? All right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Were you asking people if they had anything on water pollution control? Or no, I know we've got a couple things on water pollution okay. control. But anybody else have anything else on any other area of the budget before I go to water pollution control authority? Seeing none, we're at WPCA. We've got we know we have two items here on OPEB and health insurance. Mr. Becker. You want to do this? Be quiet. Okay, so five two one zero five OPAB would be a yeah, make a reduction in um, for thirty-five thousand nine hundred and sixty dollars. I'll make a motion for that. Go ahead, do it for both. And um, also, yeah, as part of that motion, we'll do um, five two one zero zero health insurance, and that would be a reduction of two thousand and forty-six dollars. So the combined amount for the motion is thirty-eight thousand and six dollars for. WPCA is a reduction. Do we have a second to that? We got Mr. Brown on the second. Questions, comments, or concerns? This is the better experience. Yes, I just want to confirm that. That's on the better experience numbers, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct, Mr. Mayor. 
It's based on better experience. He's shaking his head in the affirmative. Anybody? Anything else? Seeing none. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? That item carries. So we're done with anything else on WPCA? Ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Can the finance department do the calculation? We're going to take a five-minute break. Okay. Let's take a five-minute break so they can get their stats ready, and then we'll approve the budget as a whole.
later. That happens in May. That's not this meeting. Oh, so the mill right. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> then, uh, based upon all the changes made by the Board of Finance this evening, the uh, general fund budget for the year, fiscal year 2020 would be $316,941,699 for mill rate, i.e. tax rate increase of 1.90%. 1 1.90 mill rate increase, so under 2%. And a total expenditure budget of three hundred sixteen million nine hundred forty one thousand six hundred ninety nine. What what's the total, total adjustments yeah, that so we yeah, made tonight? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, okay. The total expenditure adjustments. Total expenditure adjustments. You reduced uh, the general fund budget by six hundred eighteen thousand three hundred and twenty two. Yep. You adjusted revenue by 335000 And so the total is 953322. 953322. So the adjustment to taxes to be collected is just about a million dollars. <coughs> okay. Questions, comments, concerns? If not, I'll make the motion that we adopt the budget. Of three hundred and sixteen million nine hundred and forty one thousand six hundred and ninety nine dollars. Do I have a second to that? We make this bipartisan, Mr. Matola. We have a second from Mr. Matola. Any questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, all in favor of this? Opposed, abstentions, that budgeted expenditures are adopted. Uh, before we uh recess for the evening, I would like to take the opportunity to uh Extend our thanks to Mrs. Gardner. You need to vote. What? Training. Well, fire training and water patrol. 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 Okay. Oh, they're not in those numbers. That's right. Yeah. Oh, you just blew it. Okay. Let's do. Give me water patrol uh, pollution control authority. Okay. Water pollution control. The after your adjustments, the budget is five million seven hundred fourteen thousand seven thirty two. Five million seven hundred fourteen thousand seven thirty-two for water pollution control. Do I have a second to that motion? We'll go with Mrs. Marmion. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions. That's done. Fire training. We Fire have to do training. separate too. Yes. Okay. One hundred seventy-three six six eight. Make a motion, 173668 for the fire training. We'll go with Mr. Becker, the fireman. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns? All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Now, um, I'd like to s extend our thanks to Mrs. Gardner, with the exception of her interrupting me just a couple of minutes ago, um, <laughs> and Mr. Mayor and their um, staff and their team as well as the Board of Education's financial staff. It is a very onerous process, very time consuming, labor intensive, and stressful to put together budgets like this. Uh, and then having to deal with our questions um, on a routine basis and our requests uh, don't make it any easier, um, some more than others. Uh, but very good, and each year um, it's gotten better and better. Um, as technology's improved, no. Um, as you guys have gotten better, and as quite frankly, as this board's gotten better, I'd like to thank my colleagues on the board for your uh, your intellect, your hard work, your uh, dedication, your um, active engagement in the meetings, your camaraderie, and your senses of humor during several late nights. Um, thank you very much for a good process. Mr. DeWitt, I know you'll be uh, reconvening the Budget Committee to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, and we look forward to that. Mr. Becker, since your announcement on Saturday, this is your last uh, budget cycle for a while, so we bid you adieu and we thank you. Do you have any parting comments related to the budget process? It's been, it's been quite a journey. Thank you. I appreciate right. your uh, comments. Thank you. Anybody else as we wrap up here? <coughs> Yeah, I don't know that. <laughs> it's, it's tomorrow, John. We're going to do it quarterly tomorrow. How's that? Yeah. Mr. Mayor, do you know? I mean, we've done that don't some years, about, actually. I'll look it up. Yeah. I, I All right. Know. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. We'll go with Mr. Walsh, seconded by Mr. Matola. All in favor of adjournment? Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you, everybody. Good night. <laughs>